Thank you, everybody, for great um, presentations. Very, very interesting. Um, going backwards through everyone who spoke. Uh, Patrick, starting with you, I think um, really interesting points raised about um, the fact that Gen Z and younger generations, future generations, um, have the power to create content online and edit it and change it and how they're presenting themselves. And I think the questions around that are how do we develop their skills to make sure that they're posting or creating content that is factual, believable, um, and reliable, and then not contributing to the issues that have been discussed over the full conference the last two days of contributing to dis and misinformation. So how do we develop those skills in news production? Um, and it kind of goes back to, um, bringing it back to myself, what I was saying yesterday about understanding how the news is made in the first place and how content is produced and then how it gets disseminated and shared and what people's reactions are so that everyone understands they have a responsibility within that um, to produce um, trustworthy and factual information. Um, so that were my, they were my thoughts on Patrick's presentation. Um, Natalie, you know, yours was fascinating. I can hear, listen to journalists talk about their jobs endlessly. Um, it is a big part of my job because I get journalists to meet the children that do the project. Um, I thought what was actually really interesting about yours was the emphasis on the fact that all news is news. So smaller stories like the um, the watch, the clockmaker, his shop closing down to the um, hijacking. They're equally news depending on who your audience is and that's really crucial and that's something that people often overlook, um, that kind of smaller local stories are just as important and just as valid to be told as major international stories. Um, you said that it's no longer enough to just have the core journalistic skills of finding a story, researching it, doing interviews and publishing it. You need all the other stuff now of doing kind of visuals and media um, I would actually argue that those core still skills are absolutely essential and have stayed the same and will stay the same. It's, journalism will always be about finding stories and telling them in a factual um, and informative way. And in a few years, it might not be um, video that we need to tell new stories. It will be something else. So those skills will always change and they will come along. And the more digital natives we have, the more those will just be kind of organically there anyway. Um, but those core skills of journalism that we need to teach um, will remain. So I put it to you that actually um, all we really need are the skills to find research and interview, sto and interview people for our stories. Um, and also, yeah, fascinating that we need that early interest in news in order to become journalists in the future. That is something that we wholeheartedly believe in at Newswise, and it's why we work with such young children to get them interested in the news, um, to give them as much chance as possible of becoming journalists in the future. But I think the question is, how do we then maintain that? How do we keep that going um, as they age and become cynical about the news? How do we keep their interest? Um, which is obviously something we're trying to do in the Guardian Foundation. Um, and Gary, I thought it was um, fascinating to hear about your train the trainer, the approach. It's something that we're adopting um, quite thoroughly in Newswise. We've kind of acknowledging that the way to get to children is through their teachers. And um, we can't work with every child, but we can work with more teachers. Um, and they can then work with every child and we reach them that way. And that's how this, these kind of skills become embedded. So really great to hear about how you're doing that with your courses um, and not really a question for you just kind of I thought it was great about um, young people having a say and the fact that they can kind of have action and power um, one of the stories that we use in the project is about the Windrush scandal I don't know if people here are familiar with Windrush um, for anyone who isn't it was when people were invited over from Jamaica and the Caribbean um, in the like 60s um, they were all invited over to Britain and then they weren't given any proper doc documentation 50 60 years later a lot of people started being deported um, it was a massive scandal um, the media did an absolutely brilliant job of holding power to account and brought about change and changed a lot of um, the laws and made it so that people could stay. Um, that is, is a major story that we use in the project. Um, and even for nine-year-olds, it really, really engages them. They understand um, kind of how, why it was so important. But we got this really nice feedback from a teacher about that story. Um, and she said that that story made children realize that 
they're not powerless, that through telling stories and through making news and producing um, journalistic writing, they can bring about change and they have a voice. So I think it was just really nice to kind of hear that echoed in um, Gary's presentation about the importance of people telling stories and how it can bring about change and it gives people power um, just by giving them a voice. Um, so sorry, Gary, I didn't actually have any questions for you. I just um, wanted to say, yes, we want to shout more about um, everything that you're doing. Um, but yes, thank you so much, everybody.